so what, what I'm going to go through, um, just, just spend about 15 minutes, a quick look at process to go, but set it in context with sequence kinetics as a whole, because as we've been touching on um, throughout the webinar, mobile BPM isn't necessarily standalone. It's about giving people the choice to work in the way that is appropriate to them. So here we are looking at the Sequence Kinetics SharePoint based flow time portal. And here, if I'm in the office, if I'm at home, if I've got my laptop open, this could be well where I work, where I action my tasks, make my approvals, start processes, and so on. Even see my dashboards, run reports, I can do everything in here. But of course, there's going to be times when I'm out and about and I want to go to my mobile device. Now, it, it would be nice if I could show this on my iPhone, but that's actually very tricky to do in a, uh, in a webinar. So we have a little um, picture of an iPhone here. But what we've actually got in the middle, because the process to go is a web mobile portal, it's accessible from any device that can access the internet with a browser. It means it works for all um, mobile platforms, iOS, Android, BlackBerry, Windows, and it also works for tablets as well. The advantage of tablets, you can actually work in um, both ways that I'm showing you here, but we're, we're going to focus on smartphones here. And I'm going to log on to my smartphone here. And I'm going to sign in. As I mentioned, you can do everything in our process to go portal that you can do within our FlowTime PC based portal. But what it makes use of is the smaller real estate that we have to hand. So here, first and foremost, what tasks do I need to do? More importantly, how many do I need to do today? Sequence Kinetics, it allows the process designer to be able to specify when tasks need to be actioned. And to make sure that they get actioned, we let the user know when they need to do those tasks. And if they don't action them on time, then we can send them gentle reminders or perhaps even escalate those tasks to the managers. But within here, I can see all of my tasks that I have to do and I can action those tasks. We'll come back and have a look at one of those in a moment. I can also see how many processes I've started and I can start new processes from here as well. If I want a more specific view of my inbox, I can see all my tasks, but I can see which ones do I have due today. Thankfully, I've got nothing that I need to do today. Perhaps more importantly, which ones are overdue or which ones have closed. And with very powerful search capabilities, if there's something in the list that I need to find quickly, search allows me to pinpoint that particular message very quickly. And I can manage all of my processes, whether they are processes I've started, processes other people have started, whether they're open or closed, I can see everything in here. And I can manage them by process type as well. So here I can see all of the processes that I have permissions to start in Sequence Kinetics. We'll go through and we'll have a look at some of these in a little more detail. But fourth, but by no means least, no means least at the end, dashboards and reports. This is actually one of the aspects that uh, our customers like most about the portal, is the ability for managers, for executives, directors, CEOs, and so on, to be able to monitor their business on the mobile. Executives are quite often out and about. They just very quickly want to be able to have a look to see if there's any issues. Here we're showing perhaps tasks per month across all processes. Perhaps tasks by status. Here they're showing open, closed, but more importantly, which ones are late. I've got 233 in the system which are late. And also workflows. 
These are showing all workflows within Sequence Kinetics, but we can then filter those down to look at specific workflows. So if I'm only interested in service requests, I can just see, well, how many have we got per month? Can I see if we've got any trends, perhaps positive or negative trends? And I can see workflows per status. And all of these are available to me both on the mobile device and in our laptop PC-based flow time portal. You can add extra dashboards, reports, gauges here if you wish. And you can have them accessible on both types of portal that we have. So let's start having a look at this in more detail. I'm just going to switch back to SharePoint. Now here, I'm going to start a process as if I'm working in the office. I'm going to start a service request process. Click on the link here. This then brings me up the Sequence Kinetics web form that allows me to action this task. Sorry, not action the task, actually start the process. Including the ability to be able to show some maps from geolocation. What we're actually showing here is rather than using geolocation here, our CRM database holds the location of Greenway and can show me the map derived from that location. And I can complete this form and I can submit it. Now I'm working in the office, there's lots of information on here. When I've got a large screen, that's fine, that's a great way for me to work. But of course that doesn't always happen. I'm quite often out and about. So this is a service request process. I could have just actioned this as if I was a, a call center agent who just received a call from a customer. But I may be one of the company's service engineers that's out visiting the customer. I haven't got my laptop open. I'm not connected to um, the internet with my laptop, so I want to use my mobile device. I can do exactly the same as I've just done. but from a portal. And again, I can find the particular process that I want to start very quickly, and I can launch that process. Now, what's key here is I've actually started exactly the same process, but Sequence Kinetics knows I'm on a mobile device. So it's actually given me a slightly different form. Let's make that full screen. I can still select customer and I can still select contacts. But here, we're using the device geolocation to actually pinpoint where the device is. Not where the customer is that I've selected, but where the device is. Because the service engineer could be out and about servicing a piece of equipment, speaking to the customer, whatever it may be. And at that point, the most relevant piece of information isn't where the company headquarters is, it's where the particular device is at that point. And we can capture that piece of information, and that piece of information can then be used anywhere within the process. We can ask the service engineer just to fill in a few details, just the minimum details that are required in order to be able to start the service request. And perhaps someone else will add the extra information later. But we're not filling the screen up with loads and loads of pages of fields that need to be completed. It's the few pertinent bits of information that are required. But down here at the bottom, another very nice feature of process to go is our attachments. If I do this when I'm on a laptop, if I add, want to add an attachment, it will just open up File Explorer and allow me to select a document from my hard drive and I can upload that to the process. When you're on a mobile device, that doesn't quite make sense. You don't necessarily have a file structure on your smartphone with lots of documents, of course. You may have some. What you can do when you click select on a smartphone 
is you can opt to either upload a photo or a document that's already on your device or to take a photo and to use that. So this can be a very useful feature if you want to actually, let's say that I've just discovered a big pothole in the road. Geolocation tells sequence exactly where it is. The photo can be taken off to give supporting evidence to that. That can then be uploaded and is then available to everyone in the process to do exactly what they need to do for that process. Very powerful capabilities. But what, what I now want to show is how we achieve this. What we're not having to do is to write two separate applications. We don't have to write something that goes on the laptop and something else that goes on mobile devices. We're not creating native apps that need to be downloaded and managed. It's all part of the same sequence kinetics environment. We're creating the process once using it on many devices. And here we are, we're looking into the sequence kinetics design environment, our app studio, at exactly the process that I have just been showing you. We've only shown a couple of steps, but I just want to show you how we achieve that. Over here we have our activities that we're adding to our process. We've got lots of other nice activities here, including integration with dynamic CRM and integration with SharePoint. But let's have a look at the sequence UX Studio, our form editor, and see how we achieve those two different types of forms. What we have for each form or task in Sequence Kinetics is, first of all, an underlying data model. These are the bits of information that we're collecting at this particular step in the process. And these are held in our table. Very easy to set these up to be able to specify exactly what bits of information we want to collect at this point in the process. But then we can define how this looks. So here is our first view. This is the form that I will see if I access Sequence Kinetics from my laptop. Very rich form, lots of information in there, gathering lots of information from the user. Just changing the view to the default mobile view, then shows me the view that we have for the mobile devices. Cut down, more concise, but also, as if you remember, working slightly differently because it shows the geolocation of the device rather than using the stored location of the customer to display the map. So, same step in the process, working subtly different. That's what I mentioned earlier about mobile processes can be slightly different from PC-based processes. Fundamentally going through the same steps, but perhaps having some little nuances at each point in the process where users are actioning their particular tasks. So I've shown you how mobile forms can look differently. I just very quickly just want to show you one other important aspect of mobile working, and that's email. Email is probably um, you know, the most common business app that is used when we're on our smartphones. And here I can action my tasks within um, the process to go portal. Here's one that I prepared earlier. I had a service request that came in earlier. Our messages, whether I receive them in process to go in the flow time portal as email, can all contain information telling me exactly what has happened. Move that up a bit, let me go to full screen in fact. Telling me exactly what has happened so I know everything that's happened. 
and I could action the task from here. In fact, this is a reminder. This this wasn't actually the, the one that I was going to. It's actually there we go. That was an escalation reminder that we were looking at because I hadn't actioned that previous task in time. So here we are. All the details. I am required to give an approval for a service request which has a charge associated with it. I could click on the link up here, fill in a nice little mobile form. But another capability of Sequence Kinetics is our one-click capabilities. So here, just by clicking on these buttons, I can approve, I can decline, or request more information about this step. Just another way that we can use our smartphones to be able to mentioned it earlier, reduce that human latency, making it easy for people to action their tasks, whether it's more comprehensive tasks or whether it's just saying, yes, I approve, or no, I decline that. But this actual capability is not only available to me in process to go, it's also available to me via more traditional email. So here I'm looking at exactly the same message, can be rendered slightly differently, so you can have, this is an HTML email, you can have your own branding, your own look and feel, your own color scheme, exactly the same message with the buttons down here that I can click on these to action the, the task, what we call our one-click capabilities. So I can action the task on my laptop in our flow time portal. I can action it on my smartphone device using process to go. I can action it within email, whether that's on my laptop, on my smartphone, I'm in an internet cafe browsing to my Gmail account, wherever it may be. I can action stuff quickly, easily and simply. And that's what's really key about mobile BPM. It's about making it easy to do and by easy, not just simple, but being able to action it how I want to and when I want to.